Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. So this right here is a guitar made by a brand called Donner. And Donner is a brand best known for producing great, affordable mini pedals. They've been a top choice in that category for guitarists on a budget for years, and now they're getting into the affordable guitar game. So this is the DLP. Wonder what that could stand for. Now this isn't the only option for an affordable single cut available on Amazon, but it is one of the most popular. So, what sets this apart, and is it worth picking up? Let's take a closer look. Okay, this is right out of the box. I haven't done anything except tune it to drop D flat. No setup, no nothing. I'm running through the Neural DSP SLO plugin and this is what it sounds like. I can't say I'm a huge fan of the bridge humbucker. All right, so intonation might be a little off. Action is not good, intonation is not good, but the guitar's actually got a nice weight to it. You know how like a lot of cheap guitars kind of feel like they're made of styrofoam? Yeah, this guitar badly needs a setup. There's a few easy things we can do here to make the guitar better, uh, like hydrate the fingerboard. Okay, so new game plan. So what I think I'm gonna do instead of getting more out of the box first impressions is see with no professional skills, tools, or resources, how good of a player we can make this at home in an apartment because this is one of those guitars that feels like there's a lot of potential waiting to be unlocked and I don't think I need a professional workshop to do it. Those words may very well come back to bite me, but let's get started. All right, so speed run, here we go. The first thing you wanna do with these extremely budget-friendly guitars is get those cheap strings off. They work, but they're not that resonant. They don't feel very nice. Even if I wasn't doing any work with the fretboard, something as simple as changing to my preferred clear tones or another high-quality brand like D'Addario makes a big difference. Next, I'm hydrating the fingerboard using Dunlop 65 Lemon Oil, which is generally pretty safe for anything but maple. This will make the fingerboard feel less like a desert and bring some life back into it, and as a bonus, naturally darkens the color, which in my opinion makes the guitar look better. Then, something I like to do with cheap plastic nuts if I don't have a replacement from the Nutmaster's GraphTech handy is use a mechanical pencil to get some graphite in the nut slots. That was a lot of nut talk, but in this case the nut isn't cut too bad. Just to be on the safe side, the graphite acts as lubricant so the strings don't get caught in the slots. These tuners are jumpy as hell, so maybe it's in vain, but at least we tried something. Next thing I'm sorting out is a bit of fret sprout. It's not too bad, but it is uncomfortable. I've got this stone file thing. I can't remember where it came from, but it's what I have, and I'm gonna use it to basically lightly grind down the edges of the fingerboard and frets so everything is flush. There's certainly better, cleaner, more professional methods. This is just very quick and dirty to get rid of sharp fret ends and round the binding a little to give it a more played in feel. And the last thing I'm doing is a very quick polishing of the frets using some steel wool. Again, there are much better, much more thorough methods. Check out the 1974 Gibson Les Paul Restomod video, for example. That was a very intense process and those frets are now perfect. But for this, I'm just trying to make this a real comfortable player in a very short amount of time. Even just quickly doing this will make the frets feel better and bends much smoother. Moving on, there's a fair amount of neck bow, so a quick truss rod adjustment should sort that out. I'm being a little generous here with how much I'm tightening it. Usually you wanna do smaller adjustments, let it sit for a bit, 
like a more gradual process, but I just want to get recording with this thing, so big turns, <laughs> we move. Now time to put strings back on. I'm using clear tone nines. That's just what I prefer. You can use whatever your preference is. I like the clear tones a lot because to me they feel like normal strings, but they're treated so they last a long time. Now, funnily enough, the intonation was pretty terrible out of the box, but with the neck adjusted, it's actually not that bad anymore. One saddle just needed a little adjustment and there, we're good to go. Okay, I had to run and do something else, so I'm filming this later, which is why it's dark outside now. The overall work time that I put into this guitar was about 45 minutes. A professional luthier could definitely do a much better job, but this is about as far as my limited knowledge will take us. Already, this feels much, much better. Like, this is actually a decent player now. So I think that means it's time to jump into a demo track, see how this fares in a full produced mix, and then I'll meet you back here for some final thoughts. Alright, so a few final thoughts. As far as this one goes, it was not a great player right out of the box. There were a lot of budget guitarisms. That's kind of an associated factor with these super affordable guitars. I've seen other reviews on YouTube where the guitar was great out of the box. This particular one was not, and both can be true. In this price range off Amazon, consistency is a little all over the place. So on this particular one, there were a couple of rough areas. The tuners aren't great. The nut isn't great. The pickups are really not great. Like I tried running this through the Hughes and Kettner for the demo track because it's the most hi-fi amp I have and it ended up just making the muddiness and anemic quality of the pickups even more clear, if that makes sense. So for all the isolated sound samples, I'm actually using Neural DSP plugins, SLO 100 and Pliny, and it seems to work better with these pickups for whatever reason. <laughs> and the setup out of the box was horrendous, but hear me out. That's also where the opportunity lies. If you're comfortable with setting a guitar up, or at least willing to learn, like the neck is actually very, very good. I do love a raw satin neck. It feels very quick. The shape is great. If you're comfortable with a file, the sharp fret ends weren't that bad, it wasn't a hard fix. I mean, after a little bit of work, and bear in mind, I am by no means a professional, less than an hour of work into it, 
this is a pretty decent player for 200 bucks. There are a few ugly cosmetic things too, but for how much it costs, who really cares? more interesting case for this guitar though is the neck alone makes this Donner a very compelling choice for a super affordable double humbucker melody maker style single cut mod project platform. Did that make sense? I feel like that was a little bit of verbal diarrhea. But you know what I mean. It's a nice plank of wood to upgrade the crap out of. In fact, modding it to within an inch of its life is probably what I'll do for a follow-up video and then give it away or something. So make sure you're subscribed and let me know if you think a giveaway would be cool because the body feels good. It's got all the right routing, so I won't need to make any new holes. Guitars like this are fun because with a little bit of work, you can get a playable instrument on a budget or you get a nice simple starting point for something you can mod the ever-living shit out of <laughs> your own custom specs. Like, I think a super metal-oriented melody maker would be so dope. Throw on some Fluences or some Black Winners or something. Like a super stripped-down melody maker-style metal guitar for under 500 bucks, that'd be so sick. There's no factory options for that at that price point, but this opens the possibility to do something like that yourself. And to me, that's what makes guitars like this Donner so much fun. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. Of course, these are just my opinions. I would love to know what you're thinking down in the comments below. Thanks to Donner for sending this guitar out for us to check out together and for sponsoring the video. Luke Kramer obviously killed the mix. His contact details are below. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.